Hello everybody. Welcome to introduction to databases and SQL. In this session, uh, we will discuss about DDL commands, data definition language commands. Let's begin. So in the previous session, we have understood about the SQL commands and we have learned that SQL commands are categorized into different types like DDL, DML, DCL, TCL, and query command. Now let's understand about DDL. So as the name suggests, so DDL stands for data definition language. So it defines the data. So that means it actually specify about the metadata part. What is metadata? Data about the data. So that means the table, the structure is going to have some data and that data is going to get placed under some heads actually. So that is the metadata. So data definition language speaks of the metadata that is nothing but the schema. So we can call it as a schema or we can actually call it as a structure. Okay. So as an example, I'm going to create a student uh, uh, table. So then I will have my student uh, table name like this. And I have my student ID, student name, and student GPA, student city. Okay. And uh, what are all the details actually? So these are all like columns. So the, the uh, columns are nothing but the fields actually. Right. So for example, my uh, SID value is going to be, let's say 100. And the S name is going to be some ABC. Okay. And GPA is going to be some 8.9. And the city is actually, let's say, Delhi. Okay. So this is the data. So if you observe here, my SID is integer. My S name is a string. Uh, this is something like ABC. And my GPA is a float point, floating point value. And city is a Delhi. So now, in order to have this database instance, so first I need to define its structure actually. So that structure we define uh, with the help of this DDL commands. So what are different DDL commands? We know already there is a create command, there is an alter command, there is a drop command and truncate command. So in order to create the structure, you will have this uh, create command. And once the structure is created, you want to change anything, then you go with alter command and total structure you want to remove, then you can go for drop. And there's a truncate command. Uh, this truncate just deletes the all database instance, but not the structure. Your structure is uh, intact, but there will not be any data. So that is actually called truncate. And all these DDL commands will use table keyword. Okay, for example, I want to create a table. Now I have to say like this, create table. And now I will actually use my table name, create a table student. In the same fashion, if at, all, if at all I want to alter it, I have to use again the command actually, alter table student. So what you are altering, what you are creating, that we have to define later. And drop table uh, student. So this drops it. Okay, and if at all you want to truncate, in the truncate also we will say truncate table uh, and student like this. So all these commands have this table uh, as a keyword actually. So if any SQL command, in any SQL command, if you see uh, the table keyword, then that is a DDL command. Okay, because no other uh, SQL commands will have the table keyword. Right, DML command doesn't have any table keyword. Only the DDL uh, commands have this table keyword. Right, so because the table represents the underlying structure, the storage unit, right? So DDL commands are used to work with the structure or the schema of uh, the database or the table. Fine. Okay, so with this, uh, we'll actually go to my slides and let's understand. Yeah, so these are the types of SQL commands. And now we are going to discuss about data definition language, create, alter, and drop. Now, in order to create uh, a table in order to create a table you should know that data types also which are allowed in mysql because you are going to create table in mysql and later you may be creating a table in oracle or in a sql server 
so you should know about the data types which are allowed in the database management systems so sql have its own data type set as as part of a standard but the database management systems will allow a specific data types so that means which differ from one database management system to other database management system so that one has to understand actually so there is a minor change see oracle has some data type set mysql has a data type set uh, db2 has a database set sql server has a data type set so all will be generally common only but uh, some slight difference will be there so that we need to understand actually and so coming to data types if i need to tell something about data types so overall what all data types you require overall what all data types you require okay so let me write actually here the uh, data types are for what so these data types are to represent the data right so what kind of data we have what and what kind of data we will be having in general so whether it is a programming language or a uh, sql whatever it is so now you want to store some data into database management system or otherwise you want to work with some data in any programming language like java or python or whatever it is right so you need to use uh, data types actually in programming languages we have int uh I, we we have some char and we will have some float we will have some double then we will have some boolean okay and uh, of course what else we will have uh, we will have strings to represents a string like that we will have the data types in programming languages but in databases there is a big set of uh, data types but all together we we use the data whether that is in the form of a string we use data whether that is of form of a numeric or not if it is a numeric so is it a whole number is it a whole number or is it a, a floating point number okay and then you require some logical values to be represented so those are boolean values okay so the boolean values again you will have true false otherwise zero or one actually okay and coming to specifically to the databases we will actually work with the dates also so different dates because order date joining date birth date so like this so in any database management system in any database management system many dbms or uh, especially i say rdbms we require data types to represent data so we can actually represent strings with the help of can represent with the help of char data type and you have to specify what is the size and we have var char also variable character and of course we have text also so this is the basic uh, uh, these are basic types to represent data and sometimes the data you want to represent in uh, binary so in zeros and ones so we have actually binary as also available right so in order to represent strings we have character char var char text and binary okay so then coming to the numeric in order to represent the whole numbers in order to represent the whole numbers we have int we have integer okay and uh, different types of integers as well actually tiny int big int medium int kind of thing and in order to represent floating so we will have float we will have decimal okay and we will have number etc and etc a number is also decimal is also there float is also there so these are the data types to represent uh, numeric and boolean so we have actually something called bool so here zero represents false and one is going to represent true and coming to dates actually we have the date data type and we have time data type and of course we have time stamp as well we have time stamp as well so these are uh, the data types will work with the dates usually what we do in order to represent any text we usually go with var char of course you can go with text binary etc and coming to numbers 
you will actually go with integer which are whole numbers and if it is a floating point number you will actually go with a float and if it is a boolean value for the status so you will have bool and these are the dates actually okay so of course we will have something called blob so binary large objects binary large objects so blob so images videos audios etc we can actually take as a blob as well okay so uh, if you see at the um, top view or at the outset the data will be either in the form of strings or uh, in numeric form or logical values zeros and ones in database especially we have dates right so something about this we need to know then only we can actually create our structure not to create a structure you should tell actually this student id is going to be an integer or a string or a date like that right of course sid is going to be an integer snm is going to be a string and uh, gp is going to be a float and university is going to be uh, again a string okay and for example um well, the joining date it's going to be a date actually right so if it is string we, re we use var char if it is only one character then i can go with char if it is only one character i don't want variable characters i want just one character to be taken like grade a b c then i can go with char right so these data types we usually use to create our structure okay so as part of ddl when you are creating a table so this data type has to be used so let me actually go back to this um slide actually here the data types in mysql so since we are working with mysql so numeric data types are there like integer int small int etc as i told we can actually use int which actually takes up to 11 digit number so because whole number without decimal and if you want small small int is there then you want decimal points so then you can go with float or decimal or number you have several other options we will go with float and then date time time stamp etc and if at all you want to represent strings you have char for a single character you can go ahead uh, char of one or something and var char means variable length strings right so usually we take name for name we will take var char okay so now here char var char date and time values always must be represented using single quotes so string usually in programming languages we use double quotes but here we have to use uh, a single quotes actually fine so that's about the data types so with this knowledge we can actually go and uh, create one table so before we create table what we need to do we need to create a database so tables will be part of a database right first you have to create a database so for example in this example we are going to create a school database right so in the school database you will have some tables maybe student table and teacher table or something right so uh, we can actually create a database for particular purpose so how to create a database simple so you have to use create database and database name okay so once database is created successfully then you have to use it use and your database name so then 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 you will be into that particular database so in order to check whether you are into particular database or not you have to use select database so select database will tell you whether you are into that particular database or not okay so otherwise after creating the database let's ask show databases so then newly created database will be there and if you want to uh, see the tables show tables but since you have created new you will not be having any tables in it so if at all you want to drop the database just drop database and database name and you want to drop the table by which you created so you can actually drop it okay so to the, to see the structure we have the describe command a describe or desa both will work actually okay so let me actually show how to create a database first and then we will go for creating a table so let me actually write here so let me go to my mysql so this is my mysql okay so if you need font to be increased i can actually do that uh um, 
here. So font I could be able to increase here directly by pressing control plus plus. So I need not to set anything. Yeah. So now what I'm doing is uh, I'm into my SQL. So I'm asking for show databases. So now these are the databases. Okay, so these are the databases which are available for use. Uh, first of all, as I told, actually the system databases and world is the database which I, which I have worked through my SQL installation. And now I want to create a database. Okay, so now create, create database and the database name. So whatever the database name that you want to create, you can actually create. So create a database. Uh, I am going to create a database called MyDB. I'm just saying my day, my database. Or you want to create employee DB, you want to create student DB, you want to have some application name, whatever you want, you can actually keep. I'm just saying my DB. You want to create school DB, you can say school. So generically, I'm saying create a database my DB. Now query okay, one row affected. That means database has got created. Right. So now how do you check actually? So whether it is it got created or not. So how do you check? So let me make it a little bigger uh, so that. Uh, yeah. So now I'm just saying again, show databases. So now my DB was created. Okay. So now I say select database. Okay. So Previously, I was into world database, right? So I am into world database. Now I am not into my DB, right? So now I have to change my database to my DB. So for that, what you need to do is you have to use my DB, use my DB. So now database changed. So now you'll be changing from world to uh, my DB. Okay, so you have changed from my DB whole database to my DB. So in order to check that, so now you can actually use select DB. So I have the query already written. So select database. Now I'm going to my DB, right? So if you want to drop, you can actually drop, drop database, database name like that. Okay. So for example, I want to create another DB. So I will create database sample, database sample created. Okay, so now I want to I want to show the databases. So now I have these comments already used. I can actually use arrow keys to do that. So now I have the sample DB also. Now I say drop database sample. Sample has nothing actually. I can um, drop it. And after that show databases, now sample was not there. Okay, so now I say select database. So I just want to check where in which database I am into. Now I am into my DB. Now let's use a key uh, a command called show tables. So you have any tables here? No, no tables. Just DB has got created. There are no tables. So for example, I, I will change to sys. Use sys. So my database is sys. Sys is actually uh, my system database, right? So now if I say show tables, then I can see so many tables. One not one tables are there. One not one tables are there. In fact, we have one more command, show full tables. When I say full tables, uh, I can actually see here views as well, actually. Okay, show tables means you will see only table, base tables. You can actually create a view uh, a views as well. Okay, so like that, so we can actually uh, select our uh, view tables and views. So now let me change my DB uh, to my DB. So use my DB and here show tables. I don't have any table set. So now I am going to create a table. So how to create a table? So let me go back to this one actually. Yeah, so this is the command to create a table so ddl command right so the command is going to be like this so we are going to create a structure so here i am going to create a structure called employee so if you see here the employee structure is going to have employee id employee name 
city and pay how much is the pay for employee so if you see uh, the data types actually employee id usually is a number so maybe 1 2 3 4 or uh, some 3 4 1 2 8 5 something number e name is a string so it is a varchar city is again a string it's a varchar and pay pay usually um, the amount will be in floating point right so pay is going to be some float so now we have the columns and we identified uh, the types as well so even though here char is used the best way the best data type to be used is var char variable character you can actually use of course char also can be used and instead of saying uh, decimal and uh, telling 10 comma 2 so total 10 and uh, uh, two after dot two decimal points so that is the meaning actually but we can straight away say float so we need not to actually give points etc by default it will take certain uh, decimal points so the syntax uh, now we have to see because we understand so there are fields four fields and fields name we know and the data types also we know then we have to write the uh, table so create table so because it's a ddl so table keyword should be there and then we have to give the table name that is employee and then in brackets we have to write what is a column name and what is its data type right so if you want to specify size you have to specify comma then column name and data type column name and data types of course later we will actually use certain constraints also like not null primary key foreign key check constraint default so those things we can actually use so that will be coming later so this is the basic thing i am just going to tell you right let's create a one table now okay let's create a table now so let's go to the mysql so now create a table employee so create so table keyword has to be used create table and which table we are going to create employee table we are going to create so create table employee and here we need to specify what are the column names and data types what is the column name so first i want emp id employee id and employee is going to be an integer by default it is going to be uh, 11 digits and then i want employee name employee name so employee name is actually a string right so now i say var char and maximum uh, 20 characters i am taking okay and then i have two more fields to be written so uh, what is this uh, what is the next actually city so city employee city is again a varchar and let's say city has some 20 characters maximum and then we have pay so pay is actually float pay is a float that's it i am not specifying any um, constraints here just employee ID, employee name, city, and pay. So let's put the semicolon. Actually, SQL statement should end with a semicolon. So now let's see. Query OK. If any error is there, it will tell actually uh, where is the error in the syntax, what has gone wrong. Like that, it will say. Query OK. OK. So it's just a structure, right? So no rows affected because it's a structure that created, and but there is no data, right? Now let's actually see the structure. So in order to see the structure, we have the command called a disk or describe, right? So now I'll say disk employee, describe employee. Now you can actually see how uh, the table structure was given. So we have employee ID, which is integer and it is null value because I have not specified any constraint. So by default every value you, you every field you create will be null value so that means if you are not giving any value so by default null will be there in it null is not zero so null is a special value actually so if you are not providing any value it will be null any primary keys foreign keys no so default value if you are not giving any value it is null only so any extras like uh, auto increments etc we can specify so this is a disk. So the same thing can be written as describe also. Describe or disk, both are same. Right, this is my structure. Now we have one more command actually uh, to see how we have created the table. So, so create a table, show create a table employee. Now it will actually give us how our table has got created and it will give you some useful information also. Let's actually see. Now, 
employee table we have created. So now you can see here how we have created and what is the additional information that we are actually getting here. Create table employee, right? And employee ID int and default value is null. By default, null is going to come. And then employee name, by default it is null. And city is actually where default is null. And pay is a float value and default is null, right? And if you see here the engine, what is the database engine? which is being used for MySQL is InnoDB, right? So uh, it is using InnoDB and sometimes you can actually see another engine for MySQL that is MyISAM. MyISAM or InnoDB, any of the engines you will be using actually. And the default care set is going to be UTF-8. Okay, so these are some of the details, right? So well, your structure got created in the MySQL database through a database engine that is in NodeDB. So for every table, you can actually understand uh, the structure like this. Once the structure is ready, once the structure is ready, now what you can do, you can actually insert some data. So we don't have the data, right? We don't have the data, but we know the structure. So in order to enter some data, you need to know at least one uh, DML command actually. So the DML command that we're going to see is, is, is insert actually. So once we have uh, the table created, once you have the table created, you want to add some data, right? So now you need to know about insert command. Insert is a DML command. So now we can actually uh, use insert command to work with the database instance. So insert command will be like this, insert into, insert into whatever the table is there, the table name we have to give, for example, employee, insert into employee and here we have to specify values actually and values corresponding to our fields so they are comma separated okay so these comma separated values we have to give so in the dml command you need not to specify the table keyword okay so i think the same thing has actually been given in uh, my slide as well so let's see here so inserting into values actually insert into employee values so uh, as we know uh, sql is uh, not case sense to you can actually use uppercase lowercase mixed case whatever it is so we'll say insert into employee values and this is the data okay so the same order we have to mention actually okay so let me actually uh, insert the data by going through my mysql so my query will be like this so i'm writing in smaller case only so if you are clear, if you want you can actually write the keywords in capital case so insert into employee insert into employee okay so now you are saying values and the employee table has first employee id right so i am going to give one two three and what is the employee name so employee name is uh, some employee name right we are going to say was is the employee and was is from pune because they are strings i have to give in single quotes actually and what is the pay uh, for employee was so let's say 50000 uh, six, uh, 56000 actually will be the pay let's say that is a uh, basic pay now let's say semicolon and then enter so query okay one row affected so now one row affected because in your structure you have put some data so one record so whole record you put into that right so now once structure is created you have added the data into that now how do you get the data how do you get the data so for that you require this query command you require this query command and that is select this select command so now you want to get all the data so you have to say select star from uh, employee you need not to use the table keyword select star from employee so star means all actually what is star star means all so you want to select everything actually everything from the employee okay so this is how you have to use fine so let me go there here so one record is inserted one record is inserted okay so let me make this a little bigger. Yeah. So one record is inserted. Right now I want to retrieve the data. So I can say select 
I want everything actually. So select star from employee. Now you can actually see employee ID, employee name, city, and code. Right? This is only one record. So now you want to insert many records. So what you can do is just actually use this. Uh, so now this time I will have one double line and then the employee name is going to be um, Ram. Okay. And the employee city is going to be, uh, let's say, New Delhi. And the employee salary is going to be 78. Okay, this is one record. You want to give one more record, you can actually give there itself. You can actually give there itself. So by mistake, I have pressed something. So here, what you can do is insert into employee values. And you can actually give, right? So 139. And this is actually Sham. And then you can actually give uh, the city. So let's say he's from Hyderabad. And what is the 66,000 is the basic pay. Right? So now two records will get inserted. So now you can see query OK, two uh, rows affected. So let me do system CLS. And here, let me use select command actually. Select star from employee. Now you can actually see uh, three employees, right? So in one command, I have added one record. In the next command, I have added at a time two records actually. So now we can actually work on this database instance using select commanding and number of ways. So that's a very big subject that we need to discuss. But basically how we have created the table that is important here. And what is the structure? And you can actually see uh, showing how we have created show create table command. This is also something important to understand. So this is just about uh, the creating a table, right? In the DDL, of course, we have alter table is there and we have drop table is there. Okay, so that alter and drop table things we will see uh, in the next session. So hope you understood. See you in the next session. Thank you.